We are at the Door Farm outside of Sumter, South Carolina, and I'm speaking with William Rudder, who has a doctorate in nematodes, and he is a nematologist with the USDA down in Charleston. Not everybody knows what a nematode is, so let's start with that. Yeah, nematodes are microscopic roundworms that often reside in the soil. So there's many different types of nematodes, um, but many are parasites of either plants or animals. And I feel like from my experience that our parts of the state that have um, less dense soils, sandier soils, is that a, the preferred soil for nematodes? Yeah, a, a lot of nematodes, uh, particularly root knot nematodes, prefer sandier soils. Yeah. And I know from growing okra about root knot nematode, and it just seems to be kind of something that you have all the time on certain plants. Um, and so tell me what the knots that the, the, the root knots do to the plants. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, those galls caused by the swellings you see on the roots um, uh, interfere with normal plant um, uh, root architecture. So the plant's less able to uh, uptake nutrients and mm -hmm. water. And so you start seeing stunting, chlorosis, um, uh, and heavy infected in plants. But um, oftentimes you'll see no uh, signs whatsoever, just a reduction in yield as a result of this. And also other things can cause stunning and chlorosis too. I mean, there are so many things that can happen to plants. Exactly, exactly. So uh, really the way you know you have root knot nematodes is digging up a plant, a living plant, and seeing those root nodule, those uh, root galls on the, on the roots. Now there's a new nematode that's been introduced to the United States called the guava root knot nematode or guava yeah, yeah. nematode. And I'll let you tell the scientific name, please. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Meloidogyne enterolobii is the scientific name. Uh, we've had root knot nematodes in this area for over 100 years, uh, mostly southern root knot nematodes, Meloidogyne incognita. Um, but this nematode, new nematode is just, a, just different enough so that all the crops that used to be resistant to southern root knot nematode are now susceptible to this new nematode. And I think we can just call it the ME nematode. ME, that's right, yes. And you have gotten, there's been a, it's so important to agriculture, um, particularly in the South, that I believe y'all have gotten a grant to do some research. What are some of the things that y'all are looking for? Well, first thing, we're trying to find where uh, in the Southeast this nematode actually resides. Um, one thing, we can't just look at an infected root and say whether or not it's this new ME nematode or uh, the southern root knot nematode. Oh. So we actually have to take it back to the lab and run a DNA test um, to tell the difference. Um, so it, it takes a lot of work uh, and a, a lot of cooperation with farmers and growers to try to find that. Over the years, our plant breeders have come up with a lot of crops that have some resistance to root knot nematode. And so when you go to buy a tomato, you can look for one that has the N in it and all that kind of stuff. But this nematode seems to overcome the resistance that has been bred into some of our most important crops. That's right, yeah. So far, none of the resistance gene we have commonly seen in tomato or pepper are effective against this nematode. And sadly, it looks like this nematode multiplies faster and moves more. Yes, yes, we're, that's what we suspect. So we still have a lot of research to do. We're not really sure what all has to change uh, in order to manage this, but uh, we can we know that there needs to be some changes about uh, what we plant and how we plant in order to, have to manage this. Yeah. So, you know, we try to rotate all the time. So if I'd grown okra the year before, I might plant tomatoes there the next year, but now that's not going to help me if my okra had this new kind of nematode on it. Yeah, yeah. So there's different non-host crops for this new nematode that really uh, uh, are, are better to plant. Uh, one we found is peanut, um, corn, sorghum, and cereal grains seem to be uh, poor or non-host for this nematode. So those would be the preferred rotational crops if you know you have this species. But I mean, where I am, cotton and soybeans are still major crops and apparently they would be affected. So you would potentially have great crop loss. Uh, that's true, yeah, yeah. Uh, those are not great uh, rotational crops for this nematode. And just like the, the tomato situation in tomato, we have root knot nematode resistant cotton and root knot nematode resistant soybean, and they're just not effective against this new nematode. Well, I think that it spread rather dramatically because it's in soil 
and root tissue and explain how most people plant sweet potatoes, please. Yeah, sweet potatoes are, are a particularly uh, good vector for this because we do have to uh, transplant pieces of, of the plant in order, we have to propagate it in order to make a, a new plant. Um, so often this nematode seems to be coming in on infective seed potatoes or slips that have dirt on them. A lot of us have grown sweet, our own sweet potatoes in the kitchen, you know, and cut them off and, and you get a little piece about so big and then you um, put, put that out. And I think in North Carolina, there were all these places that were certified, but we just, this came on us so quickly, we didn't know to look for it. Exactly, exactly. You know, the certified seed is the best seed. You know, they've been certified to be clear and free of this nematode and as well as a number of viruses. Um, so that is, uh, if you buy a, just a, a sweet potato out of the store and plant it in the ground, you're planting everything that comes along with that. And that probably came out of another farmer's field that might have had this nematode. So if you want to plant sweet potatoes, you can go to the North Carolina website. I don't think we have a certified place yet in South Carolina for people to order plants, but that would be the safest thing. And even then, do you think it's a good um, safety measure to, in the kitchen and not outside, wash those roots very carefully um, to get any soil off just in case? Uh, that would not be a bad idea. Certainly any soil, anything that has soil or dirt on it has the potential to transport uh, the nematodes along with it. Y'all want to find out where this is and so you want people to go out and um, look at their crops and you can't tell the difference between the two unless you or another expert gets his hands on them or her hands on them. And so if people have crops and they see that they have nematodes, the root knot nematodes of some sort, either the ME or the regular ones, um, you would like for them to get in touch with you and possibly submit a sample, I believe. Yeah, possibly. So if, uh, if it's a vegetable grower and they see they have the iconic root knotting, um, we'd really like to test and see what species it is. Um, so they can get in contact with their local Clemson Extension agent um, or find us on our website at findmenematode.org. I want to compliment you and your team on trying to find ways that we can continue to have um, not only those delicious sweet potatoes, but also that huge range of crops that are affected by this new, um, I'm going to just call it the ME nematode. Thank you so much, Wade. Absolutely.